Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, interesting stuff. First up, Bitcoin rose 118% year-to-date, massively outperforming gold, stocks, and the dollar. So the question really is, for all the gold bugs out there, do you really have an argument against Bitcoin? Also, financial giant SBI to test XRP in 6.6 trillion foreign exchange market. And the real story here is that they're not testing Ripple, they are testing XRP. And that is the big story. And honestly, if this does not work out for Ripple and XRP, I think you can put a fork in it. Also, it looks like Joe Biden will be the presidential elect. So the question is asked, would Bitcoin and crypto benefit from a Biden administration? And who better to ask than Kristen Smith from the Blockchain Association, who has quite a bit of connections in DC. And we'll get into all that. But first, let me make an announcement. Finally, my website is complete and it is up and ready to be used to the potential of what it was created for. So the website is danteachescrypto.com. I'll be putting that in the description of all of my videos. And just so you know, it is 100% free. It's very simple to sign up, click on start learning. So once we click on that little video of me and you just sign up for free, then you're gonna pick your own username and everything else, password and whatnot. It's gonna give you immediate access to the members area, which I'll show you right now. Just let me log in at the top right hand corner. And the reason why I created this website was because you can only do so much in YouTube. There's only so much that you can streamline and simplify and explain things. On top of the fact that there's so many videos and so many things being put out that it's really hard to organize. So. In this website, I try to organize it as best as I possibly could, and I broke it up into five different modules. Basics, safety, investing, reviews, and how do I do specific things. There's even a table of contents underneath, and everything is based in video, so it's pretty easy for the audio and visual learner. On top of that, there's a guidebook you can download at the very right-hand corner here. Now I'm gonna jump into module one, and under module one, basics, just so you know, we go over specific topics. And what I tried to do was make sure that these videos were very short and concise, not like how we embellish certain things on this channel. And you'll notice two things. First of all, all the videos are not hosted at YouTube because I do not want anybody to be distracted by advertisements. I want them to be super fast, which is why I chose Vimeo and their premiere plan. On top of that, there's also a Q&A for each section. So to make sure that you understand exactly what is being asked and the actual answer, as well as a timestamp that will lead you to that answer. So it's very easy and very effective and structured so you can understand everything. So the only thing I ask is very simple. Just tell two people, and this is all in the honor system. So if you do it, fantastic. If you don't, well, no one will ever know. I want you to learn these things. I want you to do these things. I want you to teach people around you. And the last thing is just remember this. It's a buffet. It's a buffet of information. I don't want you to absorb everything. Just take the pieces that you feel are important to you. All right, so that's it for that. Let's jump into today's top stories. So first up, it is November 7th. It is Saturday, 3 p.m. And uh, what do we got today? Well, just as expected, there was a little bit of a pullback. And it's like I talk about, uh, don't just dump all your money in all at once. That's uh, not a great strategy. What I try to do is just, <clears throat> what I try to do is just wait for the dips. And uh, today's one of those dips and I'm pretty happy. So Bitcoin's down below 15,000. We were almost gonna hit 16, but we're down almost uh, almost a thousand, really. Actually, yeah, we are down a thousand and we're at 14.8. Ethereum didn't do too much of a drop. Uh, they're at 437 and the reason for that the, for that pump of course we talked about yesterday ethereum 2.0 is being launched there we went over the staking guidelines and you can actually start depositing your ethereum to be a validator right now but uh, on that video i talked about exactly why i will not be doing that and you can check that out but uh, that's just my personal preference anyhow tether's tether uh 17 hey 17 billion congratulations xrp uh wow hey almost at 25 cents Bitcoin Cash 0.3, Chainlink uh, up 0.3, and uh, Chainlink, hey, brought one twelve dollars. I can't. Uh, that's pretty good. So everything's down across the board. Crypto.com 5%, Tezos, CDI zero, and eh, no one cares. 1.6 for Cosmos, Neo 1.0. So really nothing too great. The ones that I'm, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The ones that I honestly look at every day is, uh, well, of course, all the ones that I own because I'm biased, but. I always look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, just to kind of see where the market's at. And I always scroll down to right here, Celsius and Theta. And the reason I do that is because I'm trying to dollar cost average into these uh, positions. I've been doing this for a while now and uh, Celsius has been a massive success. Uh, Theta uh, also, 
So I was really kind of bummed out when I, I thought that Celsius was going to go over $2, but hey, today's a great day. So it's down a little bit. You know what that means? Put some money into it. Same thing with Theta. Uh, as digital, my man Digital Dave says, anything under a dollar is a steal. Debatable, but we'll see. I like Theta, I like the network. Really gotta get back on there, but uh, very super busy. And yeah, that's what's going on. Looks like, ooh, Synthetics is up 20%. Congratulations to your Synthetics holders. So that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top story. So Bitcoin rose 118% outperforming yet again gold stocks and dollar and there's a bunch of uh, gold bugs and i've made a promise uh to not mention their name uh names because they are irrelevant and uh look if you're a gold bug great i like gold i own gold i own gold silver and bitcoin and a bunch of other stuff but uh i have always felt like you should own all three of those they are the new savings account and there's no reason for you to not poo poo all over bitcoin just because you don't understand it uh, I think you should own it. I think you should get into it. And that's just my personal position. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. This was a great article written by Joseph Young. If you don't know who Joseph Young is, don't worry, I didn't either. So Joseph here is an analyst based in South Korea, and he's been covering finance, fintech, and crypto since 2013. This guy is an OG, and he wrote, uh, he wrote a great article today, and I'm glad I can get to share it with you. So let me scroll down here. So the part that he's talking about is, they're pretty interesting. And he talks about why is the rally going on right now and why it's actually impressive. And he talks about, of course, that there was a huge dip in March. And he gets into some little details, like during a period in which the uncertainty around the election caused massive market volatility, Bitcoin has performed well. And that's true. I mean, we've seen some massive fluctuations in the traditional market. I mean, things that'll make you go crazy if you're over there. Uh, I am not, so I don't really care. But it is interesting that, you know, we talk about crypto and how volatile it is, but in, in reality, it's been volatile in a good way. It just keeps going up. I mean, it goes down a little bit, but uh, it's been uh, rising meteorically, and that's pretty good, especially around a presidential election. He states there is a widespread narrative that investors increasingly purchase Bitcoin as a safe haven asset, that's me, amidst the U.S. presidential elections. If so, this is interesting what he says then gold should have rallied significantly given that it remains the most valuable safe haven asset. And that's one of those things that we talk about. Gold, I feel, is like that hedge. And it is something to put your money into as a real safe haven asset because it'll retain its value uh, over time. I mean, granted, it'll go down a little bit and, and uh, may raise a little bit, but not tremendously, not like a, not like Bitcoin or not like fiat, especially in certain countries. So, so Michael Saylor, the CEO of MicroStrategy, had a pretty good analysis. He said, you know what? If my cash is on fire and I want to retain the value, I need to put into something that will at least stay the value that it has. And he said, let's do Bitcoin. Put in 425 million a couple months ago. Now it's worth like 535 million. So pretty good play in two months to make, uh, you know, about $100 million. But it really starts to talk to this whole situation like, well, we talk about Bitcoin as a store of value. We're really not, not, not so. It's not really a store of value. It is, it is a store of value in, in sense, but it will never be like, like gold because gold stays pretty flat. We're not going to see gold around 2000 right now. We're not going to see it go to 200,000. That's impossible. So if we look at Bitcoin, it's right around, you know, 13, 14,000 right now, and it could go up to 140,000. It could 10 X. So really it's going to maintain your value, but it's also something different. It's like a value catalyst, and it really has been going up, like I said, exponentially. So when we talk about store of value, yes, it is, but it's also doing some pretty amazing things. And Joseph goes on to talk about that. He says, safe haven assets and inflation plays are not supposed to generate large returns for portfolios. They typically act as insurance to hedge against a potential market downturn. And that's what gold is there for, right? You put your money in gold, stays right there. It doesn't really fluctuate. Then when everything settles off, then you put it into whatever asset you want to. Bitcoin is here and it really has done what it's supposed to do to store a value, but it's, it's actually increased tremendously. So again, it's like a asset catalyst or a value catalyst, whatever you want to call it. Moving down, mainstream awareness of Bitcoin is rising. The 2020 Bitcoin Investor Study Guide released by Grayscale. Uh, there's, they're pretty big. The mainstream awareness of Bitcoin has noticeably spiked since 2019. And we had covered this a couple of days ago uh, about this report. And it really just goes to show that what we're all kind of feeling right now, that everybody's getting into Bitcoin. They're starting to FOMO into it. And this report just kind of validates that. and says, based on this year's survey, the market of potential Bitcoin investors is 32 million strong. So think about that. 
you have 32 million strong people just in this little report. And that means that all of them can't even own one Bitcoin. So if you own anywhere near one Bitcoin, uh, you're a winner in my book because you're going to massively outperform uh, everybody else out there. And they're all going to want what you have, which is you were the risky one. You were the one that had the gumption, the fortitude to actually risk it and buy Bitcoin when people probably called you crazy. So congratulations. Today's your day. And then it says com this is compared to 21 million investors just one year ago. So in one year, they've gone up 11 million potential investors. So what do you think is going to happen this bull run? Do you think it's going to slowly go up and investors will be like, oh, that's that's cute? No, it's going to be like, where can I get this? Who's selling it? Nobody's selling it. What do I need to do to get some Bitcoin? Oh, I got to pay a lot of money. All right, I guess I'll do that. And that's really what it's going to come down to. Supply and demand. There's going to be a lot of demand. There's not going to be that much supply. Actually, Satoshi Stacker, uh, he's another YouTuber. He had a, did a great video, I actually shared on this channel. And uh, he talked about how there is a ton of demand right now, but not a lot of supply of Bitcoin. Exchanges are kind of running a little bit thin. So we will see. So this little dip right here, this is just, this is child's play. This is child's play. I, I know you wouldn't uh, go and sell your Bitcoin now, unless you need to, you know, unless you're like, I got to sell it for, a, you know, whatever, a kidney transplant, whatever you got to do. So like in, th in these situations, um, just remember that the price will probably do pretty well over time. I'm not Nostradamus, but that's just my opinion. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.